We are planning some big changes locally and when I think about it, I'm a mum, I've got three children, I've also got parents living locally and so all the changes I want to be for patient benefit. These changes have been clinically led so the clinicians involved in looking after patients have also been involved in advising on what should change. And the main thing is to, to make it so that most emergency care will be on one site and most planned care will be on the other site. And this will help us ensure that we have got the right facilities and specialist support for patients when they need it. Well, firstly, I understand why people have concerns about what's going to happen. And there's a lot of exciting things that are planned over the next few years. Essentially, on the pool site, we're still going to have a very busy hospital. Uh, on this site will be an urgent treatment centre that will be open 24 hours a day, seven days a week and it's going to be run by general practitioners and nurse practitioners and they will be able to see hopefully 50,000 plus patients a year that attend here with injuries such as broken wrists, sprained ankles etc. However, there won't be any blue light ambulances coming to this site, but they will still be able to see a large proportion of patients that we currently see here. And on the Bournemouth site, we're going to have a brand new emergency department that will be seeing uh, a whole array of cases, not only the ones that I mentioned before, but also uh, more specialist cases, so heart attacks, strokes, trauma cases will all be coming to the Bournemouth site. And one of the beauties of the plans is that actually we'll have a brand new emergency department which won't be constrained by history and actually it's on a new site with great traffic links and hopefully better parking than we've got there. And there's really great excitement about uh, trying to merge some of our services together to really improve things for patients. Let's take stroke as an example. Uh, stroke uh, has been well proven in Manchester in London uh, to show great improvements in outcomes for patients when services that are operating quite close together merge to provide a special service, particularly for those 48, 72 hours. We certainly have enough patients to sustain two emergency departments, but what we don't have is the support structures to run two fully functioning emergency departments. So for example, at the moment in Poole, we've got orthopaedic surgery, uh, maxillofacial surgery, paediatrics, orthopaedic surgery, but if you needed vascular surgery or urology or cardiac specialists, they're all based at Bournemouth and actually we need to have one hospital that has all the specialties on one site, otherwise you end up having to transfer patients between departments because they can't get the right specialist in the right place at the right time. So we won't have patients turning up with bad injuries in the wrong hospital requiring urgent transfer across to the hospital that's providing fracture services. This will provide better care for those patients on a more timely basis and reduce the pressure on our southwest ambulance services. In my field, thinking about Poole celebrating its 50th birthday this year, we're really excited that we're going to have four brand new theatres built which will really improve patient care in the near future. Looking ahead to when services are reconfigured and we have emergency care on one site and plan care on the other, I think there will be a reduction in the number of patients having their planned care or planned operations like their hip replacement being cancelled due to winter pressures, which is a problem at the moment. So the separation of trauma care of the fractures away from the elective care of the joint replacements will produce benefits to shorter waiting times and better care. When I think about my career in the NHS, I've been a doctor for 25 years, I've been here for 12 years, and services change all the time. They evolve, there's new techniques, new treatments, and as the two different hospitals have evolved over time and added more services, we've ended up in a situation that you probably wouldn't have designed. So it can be that patients are on the wrong site for the service they need, and we are constantly moving patients between particularly Paul and Bournemouth, not forgetting Christchurch, but that does not provide optimal care. So these changes are aimed to make sure that the pathway of care can be delivered within one site as much as possible, and certainly more than it is at the moment. I completely understand people's anxieties uh, about change. 
But I think it's important to reassure people, whether they're uh, in the Purbex all the way through to Christchurch, that um, these changes are going to improve things for them. Um, they're going to have increased uh, care and support in the community, meaning that they only need to be in hospital when they really need to be in hospital. And we know that most people want to be at home. We're going to have more effective uh, delivery of uh, care on the same day to see, assess somebody and get them home if at all possible. And if they do need to stay in hospital, we're going to have the skills congregated together to deal with them effectively and as quickly as possible. And then our endeavour would be to, to return people as close uh, to home as possible for their rehabilitation, ideally doing their rehabilitation back at home. In 10 years' time, I think we'll have three hospitals that our staff will be really proud of, Paul, Bournemouth and Christchurch, providing really wonderful care for all of us in our local community. So there's an opportunity here for us to seize the moment, to make the changes that our patients deserve, to build a world-class healthcare system.